Hey everybody, Max Kevin here. It's Little Cutie Podcast. It's not too long. Are you are you a new listener? Are you is this your is this your first episode? Are you a new listener? You know maybe maybe you're one of those maybe you saw me at the at the comedy show. Maybe did you did you see me? Maybe yeah, I went to the uh, went to the uh, American Comedy Company last night. You know, got on stage there. I uh, did a joke about the podcast. You know, so. Uh, I think that was my first uh, my first shout out for the podcast at a at a comedy club. Uh, yeah, I probably didn't get any probably didn't get any new listeners because I you know yeah I feel like you know people are always trying to like promote their like uh, Instagram or whatever or their podcast or these comedy shows and it's like well if you even like fifty people in the audience maybe maybe you'll get like one maybe you'll get one person you know and I I feel like that whole you know, comedians becoming popular by like going on tour and stuff is so that's obsolete, man. You need a viral video. That's how you get popular, man. I feel like even Bill Burr, you know, Bill Burr was touring for years, but I, I don't think he became super popular until he had some viral videos. You know what I mean? That's how you do it now, kids. You got to get the viral videos. You got to, you got to, you know, you got to make those prank videos, dude. It's like, dude, it's just a prank, dude. Dude, I just stole your wallet. It's a prank, bro. Don't punch me, dude. Dude, I just said a bunch of racial slurs to your face and you punched me, but it's a prank, bro. That's how you get the million views, dude. That's what I gotta do, you know? I think I'll just, uh... I think I'll just start making videos of me walking around San Diego just like, you know... Hurling hurling racial insults at minorities, you know, and, ha- and we'll just have them punch me. And then I'll put that up on YouTube and get a hundred... 100 million views, and then I'll, then I'll tour the country. Yeah, this one dude uh, performing at uh, American Comedy Company this weekend. It's uh, his J.P. Sears, who is like this, uh, he, he's a YouTube star. I think he became famous from YouTube. He, uh, he's real funny, actually. You know, I like his, his videos are great. They're like, uh, he, he's always making fun of like progressive people. Or, or he's, you know, but he, he looks like he's like a, he looks like he's a vegan, a socialist vegan, you know, because he's like a really skinny white guy with like long red hair. And uh, I don't know, his videos are great. JP's here. Check him out. Check him out. you probably already seen him. You know, you probably didn't even know his name, but you probably already seen his videos. Anyway, uh, yeah, last night at the American Comedy Company, it was great, man. It was great, you know, because, uh, you know, out of the 20 comics, 25 comics that went up, probably only only a couple of them, only a, cu- only a few, uh, only a handful sucked sweaty, hairy balls. It was great, you know, the whole the whole first hour there just it was just killer after killer. It was awesome. it was an awesome night, you know. I wish I wish every night could be like that, you know? It's like every comedian's great, every every comedian went up there, just fucking killed it. God, there were there were two comedians in a row from from uh, Iraq. I mean what are the chances of that, you know? Like the one guy was from Iraq and then the next guy was from Iraq. That's uh you know rare, I guess. I don't know. I mean, I guess it would be like, you know, if some if there was some other white guy that could speak Japanese that went on before or after me, you know what I mean? I guess that'd be that'd be weird, too. Yeah, there was one guy that went up there, and uh, he did this one joke. Yeah, I have a very similar joke. God, it, God it's, it's amazing, you know, how uh, unoriginal everyone is on the planet, you know? Or how... Uh, how we how we can have parallel thinking, even though I've never actually had a conversation with this guy. Like he did, he did this joke about how you know back in the day we used to have serial killers, and now we have uh, mass shooters. And uh, his his fucking the the setup and premise was almost the exact same as how I worded mine. You know, he had a different punchline, but yeah, I mean actually I mean the punchline was it was different words, but it's actually pretty much the same punchline that I have. You know, just expressed differently. It was the exact same fucking joke, man. And, uh, you know, I've never talked to this guy. He's never seen, he's never seen me perform that joke, you know? I've never seen him perform it either, so. It's just weird how, uh, how hard it is to be original, you know? To, to write something that no one's ever said before or thought of before. That's the, that's the trick of comedy, you know? You gotta, you gotta write jokes that no one's ever heard before, but also that everyone can relate to, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, that's tough. It's tough stuff. It's tough stuff, you know? Yeah, I also did this. I also did this, this like throwaway transition joke where like I, I say, "Oh, my my new my new TV my new favorite TV show is porn." I feel like that's been done before. I don't know if I heard that here somewhere, but I feel like that's 
That's a, that's got to be a street joke, right? I mean, and anybody could come up with that joke. Anyway, it was just a throwaway transition. I'm not I'm not too I'm not in love with it, but you know, it's like uh, I feel I see I see some of these guys in the San Diego scene, and they're and they're doing some jokes that are similar to mine. And it's just like oh god, I gotta. Now I can't do that joke, and everyone's going to accuse me of stealing it from this guy, even though I wrote it fucking two years ago. And he might have wrote, he might have written his ten years ago, you know? Who knows? Who knows, man? But uh, you know, that's why I gotta get I gotta get up more and just like do. Never do old material. Always do like uh, all my new stuff. So that, you know, you gotta get it out there. So once it's out there, you can say, "Hey, I, I brought, you stole that joke from me," you know? Oh, uh, anyway. Uh, yeah, so it was a good night at the uh, at the uh, American Comedy Company. There, they were um, they're having a little contest again for the to open for JP Sears. I, I didn't even realize they're having a contest. If I knew if if I knew that, I probably would have done a little different set. But I guess it didn't really matter. You know? by the time I went up, like almost at the very end, and pretty much two thirds of the audience was gone. And so uh, after I did my set, I kind of felt like I bombed because I didn't really hear much laughter. But uh, there weren't that many people there, and when I re-listened to my recording of it, I guess I got some laughs. I heard, like, I heard the laughs that I didn't hear when I was on stage. It's weird. It's weird. It's like it's like if the whole room doesn't erupt in laughter, I kind of feel like I'm bombing sometimes. Uh, anyway, any hoot, any hoot. Yeah, I had a, I had a, all right, said I fucking got a couple of the jokes. I messed up the word order too, you know. It's like you just you just mixed up the order of two words and it it fucking ruins the whole the whole joke, you know. You gotta have perfection. Anyway, I'm uh, I guess I'm a lucky duck this week because I got picked for the uh, comedy store tonight. I'm going over there, I'm gonna go perform at the comedy store tonight. Hopefully, I'll fucking kill it, dude. Get my Netflix special. Fucking get my sitcom. Then I'll just fucking, I don't know. Oh yeah, what a lucky duck I am, you know? I got picked last night at the uh, comedy company. Got picked this week. It's my lucky week. It's my lucky week. Hope I don't get in a car accident on the way over there. You know, anyway, that was a few minutes. Thanks for listening. I'll see you tomorrow.